What up, what up, world? Back again for the 2020. Welcome to an all new episode of Hosted by Decent with me, your host, Decent. And my guest at this time has been somebody I've been trying to get in here since the ball dropped. When I say one of the hottest, 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 with a whole bunch of T's artist coming up in New York City and in hip hop in general. He's been setting the streets ablaze with this Hood Life Crisis series. He's just been all over the place giving you that good, dope music. And he has the distinct honor of being the youngest guest on this show, making me feel incredibly old, but that's another story for another time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for J.I., the Prince of New York. Woo! Brother man, and no cap, that's what you kids say, right? Mm -hmm. No cap, I've been trying to get you in here since you cross my radar, you know, without even listening fully through to the first song, I was like, this kid is amazing. He's phenomenal. So for those for who are familiar with you, and shame on you if you're not, tell the people a little bit about yourself, brother. I go by Jay. That's my first and my middle name I put together. My uncle used to call me that. That's how I came up with the name. But um, I grew up in Brooklyn, Crown Heights, Franklin Ave to be specific. Um, I'm 18. My birthday's in September. Um, I released the project, the first project on my birthday, and from there it's just been up from there. You know, just the response, the um, the feedback, the just the 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 amount of people that's tuned in. Even if you feel me, the whole world don't know yet. A lot of people know, so it's like we getting there slowly but surely. So it's it's, it's amazing for real. I just wanna thank the fans for real. I don't feel like I get a, I, I get enough time to do that, but just wrapped up the tour too. So like I said, shout out to the fans. Wouldn't be here without y'all. I'm just very thankful for y'all, for real. Yeah, and as we talked about off camera, your movement is definitely really, really strong. You definitely resonated with, you know, not just people from New York, but mm -hmm. the young people from New York yeah. as well. So, you just wrapped up the tour. What was that whole experience like? It was dope. Um, it was it was my second tour, but my first headlining tour. Um, I was nervous. I'm not gonna lie. I, in the beginning, I was nervous. I didn't really know what to expect because mm -hmm. like we had only had like two rehearsal days, and um. I was just going over the songs rather than like talking to like I, I I didn't really have like shit to fill in as far as like after each song like you, you know, just going through the steps the crowd. as far as like you know yeah. like, set list. So talk about you know your projects, her life crisis. Now when I hit play, automatically you know I'm just like I'm I'm tuned in you know because me coming from New York you know me having a specific ear when it comes to that vibe and you know how it resonates with me and off rip you definitely embody that and then I just went down a rabbit hole from there jumped into your videos mm -hmm. and you were just pumping them out like I thought it was going to stop at a certain point but no just kept going and going and going and going mm -hmm. how do you find the time between touring between being all over the place you got a few interviews after this one mm -hmm. but between all of that how do you find the time to not only make dope music but to also put out these videos just like one after the other it was really just the hunger the drive like there was a point in time where like i was like, i was just i was desperate to get out there i was desperate to like really just show consistency and put pressure on people i felt like that was one thing i lacked consistency and that's why i never got to where i wanted to be i'm mm -hmm. there now because of Absolutely. consistency but like that's one thing i never had so i'm just like let me put pressure on people I'm not gonna lie, this is probably like the longest I went without shooting a video. But I'm on tour and stuff like that, so I'll give myself that little break. But like, I, the whole the whole plan was just to put pressure on people, put my foot on their neck, make sure they know that we're not done. It's not just one record, it's not just one video. We come with a whole body of work. Yeah. Talk to us about the title for Life Crisis. It's funny, my cousin had told me, like, this was probably two years ago before I did anything. He had told me, like, yo, what's your plan? What are you trying to do? And I was like, I was trying to come up with a tape. He had gave me a, he said kid life crisis at first, 
And it was cool, it was cute, but then I was just like, he just gave me the name. The the concept I really dug towards, I came up with Her Life Crisis, cause like, I really, I just wanted to put that out there cause he, he's responsible for the, the crisis, little concept. But the Her Life Crisis, it got to me to the point where I hit a certain age where I realized I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to stay in the streets. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be involved in the, what's going on in the hub, what's going, cause it's gonna stay there, it's not going nowhere, you know? Right. And I'm at an age where I'm trying to do something bigger, something better with myself. Then, you know, midlife crisis, you hit a certain age where you realize you're not young anymore. Mm -hmm. So for me, just- I That was me yesterday, but that, once again, another story. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, it was just like, you know, I, I realized I'm young, I gotta do something with my life. I'm not trying to just stay here and not do anything and just feel me like there's too many people that live their life and don't get to do anything with it. They, they live their life the way other people want them to live yeah. it. And they live their life just trying to get by. Yeah. I'm trying to live my life to the fullest, you know? You're recalling events, recalling situations, recalling the environment that made you as well. So you're also bringing eyes and attention to the fact that, yeah, I don't want to stay here, but at mm -hmm. the same time, this is what made me, this is who I am, this is a huge part of who I am as a man and as an artist because if you look at all your visuals, they're set in the hood, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of people may feel like that's just like very one dimensional. I don't think so because if that's something that made you, that's something that condi conditioned you and now you're on this level where you're rocking stages across the country and mm -hmm. hopefully the world really, yeah. really soon, mm -hmm. you know, and pretty soon people are gonna know who you are, you're gonna be a household name. You wanna have that dynamic, you wanna have this you know sort of duality to you as like you look yeah i am this up and coming young superstar who wants to chase his dreams and not be stagnant but at the same time i'm also somebody who came from these streets who knows what these people are going through who knows what you know it takes to survive out here so mm -hmm. if i can do it you can do it mm -hmm. too so it's definitely a great way to introduce yourself to the world and to also kind of be this sort of champion for the younger generation that's coming definitely. Out. yeah and speaking of the younger generation, and I'm not gonna get into how old I am, but I am gonna get into this game. Now, the name of this game is called Age Appropriate. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm gonna give you a list of things, and I want you to tell me at what age should you stop doing these things. Stop or start? Stop. Okay. All right, you ready? Yeah. At what age should you stop playing 2K? Um, when your hands stop working, I feel like when you catch your arthritis <laughs> and you just start dying. I feel, I feel like 2K is a, is a universal sport. I mean, it's a universal game. And you got little kids playing, you got grown men playing. I don't feel like if, if your girlfriend has a problem with you playing 2K, it's the wrong person to be with, for real. Like, I feel like 2K is responsible for a lot of people's happiness. If they don't want to see you happy, that's their problem. You hear that, babe? Two years. You hear that? Yeah. J.I. said, if you don't act right, I got to up and leave. Uh-huh. If you don't let me play 2K. I feel like 2K is a, is a game where anybody can play it, for real. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. When should you stop trolling on social media? I feel like there's some people that are known for trolling on social media, and that's all they're going to be known for. But as far as, like... You doing it to get a response out of people, you should never do that. That's corny. In my opinion, I never went on my way to hate on somebody or joke. I maybe trolled once. I'm not sure if you saw the Wendy Williams situation. I mean, but, just, but yeah, just that was, that, that's, that's probably when I was trolling. But besides that, I trolled in a positive way. There's positive ways to troll. I feel like a lot of people trolling is corny. I don't feel like you should do that. That's not genuine. This one might be triggering to a lot of people. Uh huh. But you know what? Let's do it. At what age should you stop rapping if you haven't made I feel like if you're in your mid-30s and you're still rapping, you've been rapping for 20 years, pack it up, Papa. It's not going to work for you. I think you should definitely maybe try to do management or become an A&R or something. But rapping, I don't know. I feel like you should stop. Or maybe change the subject. If you're 35, talk about paying bills or some shit. Midlife crisis. Talk about something that's relevant to your age. I don't wanna, we don't wanna hear you talking about, oh, I'm young, yeah, I'll be doing this, that, and third. Don't talk about stuff young people do, cause you know, you, you old. If you're in your mid thirties and you haven't made it yet, you should put the mic down and start your own show on Pop Desk. Exactly. Tour wrapped up, body of work, just keep coming, videos keep coming. Now, once again, you're just in the thick of getting your legs underneath you. Where do you see yourself I'm not even gonna say in the next few years because that's just like a really, really broad question. I feel like everybody asks a young artist, 
where do you see yourself at the end of this year in particular? Because that's a more realistic time span to kind of gauge everything that you started this year and everything that you probably want to accomplish by the end of the year. I feel like if I could stay consistent, drop more music, I definitely will have a bigger following. I see myself maybe headlining way bigger tours, bigger venues. Um, I see myself growing mentally. Besides the music, let's not even talk about the music, let's talk about me being a human being, which I am, personal life I have. I see myself maturing, becoming a better person, a pop, more positive person mentally. Um, I wanna be just, I wanna help the world too. I hopefully I can have enough money where I donate to charity, start my own charity. Not for nothing, I think your 2020 is probably everybody's 2020 at this point. Mm -hmm. And once again, man, I'm a huge fan. Everything that you're doing thus far, just keep doing it Appreciate because you, you definitely have it. You have the talent, you have the mindset, you definitely have the work ethic. And when you tie all of those great things together, you have amazing people like Sasha helping you out. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're going to be all right in this industry, man. Just definitely. keep doing you and keep doing your thing. But I ain't telling you nothing that you already know because after all, I am old. <laughs> <laughs> but J.I., thank you for stopping by, man. Really Where can the people find you at on social media? Instagram, I A M J period I. Same thing on Facebook. That's my artist page. Look up the same thing. YouTube, look up J.I. Social media sites, just look up J.I. J.I.'s in the building. Make sure you go grab Hood Like Prices Volume 1 yes. and 2 out now on wherever you get your musics from. I am your host, Decent. Thank you for joining me once again on another episode of Hosted by Decent. Make sure you subscribe to the Pop Dutch YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that little bell to be notified of brand new content. And if you're checking out this lovely little shirt right here, we got merch now, people. Make sure you hit the link in the description to get you some Hosted by Decent merch. And we're a podcast, so Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Make sure you listen here if you can't see the video. Looking forward to 2020. See you soon. Peace.